Hello, I'm Rob, and on this edition of R&B Reviews, I'm going to look at the latest film in the Terminator series, Terminator Salvation. The film stars Christian Bale as John Connor and was directed by Charlie's Angels and We Are Marshall director Mick G. The year is 2018, and a system called Skynet has destroyed much of humanity while the survivors has formed the Resistance. One of these soldiers is John Connor, who has been foretold in the previous three films that he will become eventually the leader of the Resistance. Now, who said that first? Kyle Reese in the first Terminator film. In this film, Kyle Reese is a teenager, and he's one of the last of the L.A. branch of the Resistance when he encounters a man named Marcus Wright, who appears to have no clue as to what just happened. When they hear a broadcast from Connor, they decide to go and find him, but then they are captured by the machines. And when Connor finds out, he realizes he has to save Kyle or face a change in the future as well as the past. Now, having seen the first three Terminator films, I was very disappointed with this film. To me, it felt more like the movie was about the special effects than the story. The sound effects at times I felt were a little overdone and loud. And except for Marcus, there looked like there was a lack of character development for many of the characters in this film. Most of the actors looked like they were just reciting dialogue with no emotion like a character named Barnes and another one named Blair as well as Connor's wife Kate. Now I couldn't believe this was the same character that appeared in the third Terminator film. To me she just didn't show as much emotion as in the Terminator 3. Like there's a scene where John could die. She seemed a little bit too calm to me. I mean if my spouse was laying on a table close to death you know I would be more upset. And, uh, but I think the best acting was done by Sam Worthington as Marcus Wright, as well as Anton Yelchin as Kyle Reese. They really made the most from the dialogue, and they, I think they really gave the best performances. And with the first three films, there was better character development. Like in the first film, Linda Hamilton's character goes from being a scared waitress and becomes stronger. And in the third film, Connor goes from being a young adult who's hiding and he doesn't want the responsibility that's laid out for him to lead the resistance in the future. But then over time, he develops the qualities that we start to see in this film. Now, as John Connor, I thought Christian Bale was okay. You know, I think, personally, I think Nick Stahl was, from the third film, made a much better Connor, but that's just my opinion. Bale sounded too much like Batman from The Dark Knight, you know, with that gruff, husky voice. It was, I don't know if the director or if the producer told him to do it like that, but I thought that was not a good decision. But during the last third of the film, after a command, in the scene after a commanding officer tells Connor that he has been relieved from his command, his performance starts to change. You know, his voice changes, and it's not husky and gruff anymore. And I don't know if that was to, if that was to show that he is getting closer to becoming the leader of the resistance or what. But um, I just, and also... With this film, there seemed to be a fight or a chase, then a few moments of dialogue, which sometimes doesn't push the plot further, and then there would be another move on to the next fight or chase. I mean, yeah, there were chase and fights in the other Terminator films, but with those, you know, I felt more on the edge of my seat, you know, and you felt really scared because the villains were after the main characters, and I didn't really get that feeling here or in the third film. And, and plus, I think there were less fights and chases in the first couple films than in this one. I mean, the film looks good, the sets and the cinematography look excellent, but I just felt like it lacked a strong story and it focused too much on the special effects, which were impressive, I'll admit, they were very impressive. And um, I also found the plot to be a little bit confusing at times, especially in the first 20, maybe like the first 20 minutes after the opening credits. Uh, the script was written by the same writers as Terminator 3, and uh, with Terminator 5 already in development, I hope the next film follows what the first two films did, you know, with a strong story and, I, and you know, stronger characters. Because I think if you want to see probably the best of the Terminator films, I strongly recommend the first two, especially the second film, which I think is the best, you know. The first Terminator film I thought was pretty good. The third one I thought was okay. I mean, some people think it's the worst in the... Um, Series, but you know, I, I thought it was just okay. It was all right, but 
Um, I thought very long and hard about what to rate this movie as a verdict, see it in theaters, rent it on DVD, or to snuff it. And even though the film looks good, I see that more as a superficial value. I mean, yeah, I've said films have looked good in previous reviews, but, but with films like Star Trek, I thought those had much stronger stories and stronger characters. So I'm going to I'm gonna have to go with snuff it on this film. I was very disappointed. I know, but um, in my opinion, the first two films were better, and I hope the next film has, you know, stronger characters, stronger performances, and, you know, the special effects, you know, are good, but I want to see, I wanted to see more development from that. So um, that's it for this edition of R&B Reviews. If you want to leave me any feedback or you post any comments, feel free to do that. And we'll see you on the next edition of R&B Reviews.